Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about type 2 binary ionic compounds. So what are type 2 binary ionic compounds and how do they work? Well in an earlier video we talked about type 1 binary ionic compounds and we said with type 1 you have a metal bonded to a non-metal but this metal has to come from groups 1 or 2 and be either silver, zinc, or aluminum. With type 2 binary ionic compounds once again you have a metal bonded to a non-metal however that metal is going to be able to form more than one type of ion in other words it has a varying oxidation all right so if we take a look here with type 2 binary ionic compounds we have a metal that typically is going to come from the transition metals and the post transition metals with the exception of silver zinc or aluminum bonded to a non-metal so anytime we have a metal that comes from the transition metals or the post transition metals except for silver zinc or aluminum and it's bonded to a non-metal it's going to be a type 2 binary ionic compound for example if we take a look right here we have copper 1 chloride if we take a look right here we have copper 2 chloride so what is the difference between copper 1 chloride and copper 2 chloride well it has everything to do with the ion that this copper uh, atom is going to form for example if we take a look right here chloride has a negative one charge so this must be a positive one charge so when we write the chemical formula or the name of this compound here this one here turns into a Roman numeral capital I in the parentheses right here to denote that this is the copper ion with the positive one charge that we see right here. For example, we know chloride has a negative one charge, but there's two of them. So the total charge on the right hand side of this compound here is negative two. And because we only have one copper ion here, it must have a positive two charge. And that is why this is called copper two. Okay, so the little Roman numeral in parentheses tells you what the charge of that metallic ion is going to be. All right, so before we start learning how to write the chemical formulas for these and uh, and name them, we have to first take a look at some of uh, some of the common type two metal cations. Okay, so what I recommend you do at this point in the video is uh, is maybe just pause this video here and take a look at some of the common type two metallic ions or cations. If you take a look, for example. Iron can form two types of ions. It can form positive two ions or positive three ions. And if we're talking about the iron ion with a two plus charge, then systematic name is called iron two with the Roman numeral in parentheses to indicate the charge of this little ion right here. Okay. And if we're using the common name, then this will be called ferrous. Okay. We use the Latin or Greek root for iron, which happens to be ferrum. And we add an OUS ending to denote it's the iron ion with the lowest charge. If we take a look right here, iron three is going to be the iron ion with a three plus charge. Or we can also use a com the common name system and call this ferric. Okay, so if it ends in OUS using the common name, it's the lower of the two charges. If it ends in ick, it's going to be the higher of the two charges. For example, if we take a look right here, there are two copper ions. One of them is copper one, one of them is copper two. Copper one has a positive one charge and copper two has a positive two charge. Or if you wanted to, you can call this cuprous, which refers to the ion that has the lowest charge and cupric which refers to the ion that has the higher of the two charges. All right, so remember that if you're using the common name, that ick is going to be bigger than us. And what does that mean? Well, if it ends in ick, if you're using the common name system, then that's going to mean it's referring to the ion with the lowest charge. And if it ends, I'm sorry, if it ends in ick, it's going to be the ion that has the largest charge. And if it ends in an OUS, it's going to have the lower charge. For example, cobalt is plus two, whereas cobaltic is plus three. Plumbus is plus two, whereas plumbic is plus four, and so on and so on. Okay, so I would pause this video, familiarize yourself with uh, some of the type two cations and uh, start to memorize some of those charges. So that way, when we write chemical formulas and name them, um, you'll it will be a lot easier for you to do so. So let's now start to name these type two binary ionic compounds and see how that works. Okay, so we're gonna learn how to name some of these and it says right here when naming type two binary ionic compounds, it's simple, it's simply name the metal followed by a Roman numeral in parentheses to indicate the charge of the cation followed by uh, the non-metal with an IDE suffix. So in these examples here throughout the video, I'm mostly gonna be using the the systematic name for naming these type two binary ionic compounds, but I'll also show you uh, how you can go ahead and name these using the common name. So if we take a look right here, 
We know that this is type 2 because iron is a transition metal. Oxide has a negative 2 charge, and 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So 2 times what number will give us positive 6? That's going to be a plus 3 charge. So when we write the name of this here, we can use the systematic name, which is iron 3. Right? We turn this into a little Roman numeral in parentheses right here. And then oxide. All right, let's take a look at this one down here. We have a negative 2 charge for oxide, and there's only one of them, so the total charge over here is negative 2. There's only one iron here, so its charge must be positive 2, and so the name of this is going to be iron 2 oxide. Okay, so using the systematic name, here are the names, but what if we wanted to use the common name? Well, if we take a look, this is referring to the iron ion that has the higher charge, so this will be ferric oxide. And this right here is referring to the, uh, the iron ion that has the lower charge, so that will be ferrous, ferrous oxide. All right, so that's how that's going to work. If we take a look right here, it looks like this is going to be lead for chloride. And underneath it, this is going to be lead to chloride. If we take a look right here, it looks like this is going to be a negative 3 charge, and there's only one of these. Therefore, this must be a positive 1 charge, so that way these two charges add up to 0. Remember, anytime you have a metal and a nonmetal, they must add up to 0. So the name of this is going to be copper 1. Since it has a positive 1 charge, we put a 1, a capital I, in parentheses in Roman numerals here and nitride and if we take a look right below it here it looks like this one here has a negative three charge nitride two times negative three is negative six so three times positive two is positive six now the ion charge will add up to zero and so this is going to be copper two nitride All right, so that's how we're going to name these guys, okay? You need to make sure that you put the Roman numeral in parentheses to indicate the charge. What if we're working the other way, though? All right, so what if you're given the name and you're asked to write the chemical formula? Well, it says right here that uh, when writing the chemical formulas for type 2 binary ionic compounds, you're going to have to add subscripts to each atom in the compound, so the ionic charges of the two different atoms adds up to zero, just like with type 1 binary ionic compounds. So iron 3 is Fe plus 3. Sulfide is S minus 2. These two charges don't add up to 0, so you're going to need, it looks like, two of these and three of these, so that way they do. If we take a look at mag manganic oxide, it's talking about the manganese ion with a 4 plus or plus 4 charge. Oxide is O negative 2. You're going to need two of these, so that way the charges here balance out or cancel out the positive 4 charge of manganese. If we're looking at right here, we're talking about auric chloride. This is the common name for this, so this is going to be gold. Gold 3, it looks like. Gold plus 3, and you can refer back to the table of metallic ions, type 2 metallic ions. Chloride is negative 1, so we're going to need 3 of these. And if we take a look right here, copper 2 is going to be plus 2, and nitride is N minus 3, so it looks like you're going to need three of these and two of these. That way these charges add up to zero. All right, so let's take a look at a few examples and uh, see how we do. All right, so in this uh, example here, it says to write the chemical formula for iron three chloride. Iron three is Fe with a plus three charge. And you know that chloride comes from group 17 on the periodic table, so it's negative one, or we'll just put a minus there. So you're gonna need three of these, right? So FeCl3 is the correct chemical formula for iron three chloride. Let's take a look at another one. This example here, we have plumbic oxide. So this is given the common name. Plumbic is lead, lead. And because it ends in ic, it's referring to the iron ion with the positive four charge. And oxide is O negative 2, so you're going to need two of these here. So PbO2 is going to be the correct chemical formula for plumbic oxide. Let's take a look at another one. In this example here, it says tin 4. Tin 4 is Sn with a 4 plus or plus 4 charge. Nitride is N minus 3. These two charges don't add up to 0, so you're going to need three of these and four of these. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 3 times positive 4 is positive 12. And then they'll add up to 0. So SN3 
N4 will be the correct chemical formula for 10,4-dietride. Let's take a look at another one. All right, in this one here, we have to write the chemical formula for cupric phosphide. All right, so cupric refers to copper, and because it ends in ic, it's the copper ion with the higher of the two charges, which is plus two, and phosphide, you know, is P minus three. Phosphide comes from group 15 on the periodic table, and all those form negative three ions. So you're gonna need three copper ions and two phosphide ions to get them to cancel out and add up to zero. So Cu3P2 is going to be the correct chemical formula for cupric phosphide. Let's take a look at another one. All right, in this example here, you're given the chemical formula. You have to write the name. So take a look at this. We know that oxide forms a negative two charge, but there's two of them, right? So two times negative two is going to be negative four over here. Because we only have one lead ion, it must have a positive four charge. So when we write the name for this, it's going to be lead followed by the Roman numeral four, and then we're gonna put oxide next to it, giving the systematic name for this. Or if we wanted to write the common name, then this will be plumbic, plumbic oxide. All right, so either one of these two should be correct, depending on what your teacher or instructor is asking you to give. Let's take a look at another example. All right, we have CON, okay? So right here, oxide is negative three. Because we only have one cobalt, it must be a positive three. So when we write the name of this, this will be cobalt three. Roman numeral three, nitride. And if we wanted to write the common name for this, this would be the higher of the two charges that uh, I'm sorry, the higher of the two uh, charged ions that cobalt forms, so this will be cobaltic nitride. All right, let's take a look at one final one. All right, so we have MNS2. Sulfide is a negative two charge. Two times negative two is negative four. Because we only have one manganese here, it must have a positive four charge. So if we write the systematic name for this, this will just be manganese. And my pen is giving me some problems here, so I apologize for the sloppy writing. Manganese, manganese, four sulfide. And if you were asked to give the common name, that would be manganic sulfide, right? It's the manganese ion with the higher of the two charges. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at a few more. Try them on your own. Test yourself and see if you get them right. So what I would do at this point is go ahead and pause this. Go ahead and try these, on your, uh, try these out on your own. Go ahead and pause this at this point. Take five or ten minutes to try these out on your own. And I'm going to give you guys the answers to these right now. Here are the answers. Bam, there are the answers right here. Check out how you did. If you like what you see here, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comment section or uh, comments or questions down in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful.